Hello, I'm Dr. Laura Sokola with Straight Up English. The purpose of these videos is to serve as a tool for teachers of English to speakers of other languages. Each video will demonstrate clear, simple, and proven teaching techniques for you to use in the communicative classroom. Today's topic is the schwa. Now, if you don't know what the schwa is, you've probably seen it before with the upside down E symbol in dictionaries. And the reason it's there is because it's actually the most common vowel sound in English. It's the sound that occurs when many vowels are in unstressed words or syllables in a phrase. And so the challenge for many learners is that they mentally associate each vowel letter, each symbol on the page, with a clear vowel sound produced, such as A or A ah or E. And when they try to produce every vowel in a long, pure, clear way, it has a strong influence on the rhythm and uh, not only the rhythm, but also the other sounds in a given word. And so we need to be able to reduce those unstressed sounds to have the easier, long and short wave-like pattern in the stress and intonation patterns of English, and also to help make sure that the listeners are hearing what they expect to hear in order to reduce confusion whenever possible. To begin, on the board, write this, the letter B and the letter M and then have your students say it. You can model it first. You'd say, repeat after me. Boom. Boom. Go ahead and say it for yourself. Then ask students what sound they hear between the b and the m. Both of these sounds are what we call bilabial sounds because they use both of your lips. So in order for one sound to lead to the other, somewhere your lips have to separate just a little bit to allow the air to come out. Otherwise you just get mmm. So what sound is there between the b and the m? And then in the end, you'll let them know that the reality is that there's sort of a mini vowel in between. And that mini vowel is the schwa. When they're making the schwa sound, you want to have them think about how it feels in their mouth. You want them to think about how tense their cheeks are. Actually, they're quite relaxed. You want to have them think about where their tongue is. And the tongue is just relaxed very uh, simply on the bottom of the mouth. It's just resting there. You want to have them feel the lips in between. Their lips are also relaxed. They're not stretched wide, and they're not very round, and even the jaw is at a completely relaxed, natural position. The jaw is this bone that's right here. It's not open, and it's not tightly clenched. The schwa is a completely relaxed sound. So when they say, boom, boom, almost nothing moves. It's completely relaxed there. The next word is telephone with three syllables, te, le, phone. The e on the end is silent, and the stress is in the first syllable on te. So we'll have a clear e for the first. This is unstressed here. So the second e becomes the schwa, and this phone is a secondary stress, but it will also, the o, it will also have a clear vowel sound on that. But what's, again, most important is that the second E gets reduced. So we have telephone, telephone, tele, le, not tele, it's not telephone, but tele, almost like you're jumping from the L to the PH. Remember that in English, a PH together makes the F sound. So if we have the L to the F, with the schwa in the middle, we want to try to jump right over it. All you want is enough vowel just to connect these two sounds. So we have telephone, telephone, 
And if we can get students to do that, that will give us a much clearer stress contrast. Telephone. Okay? Let's try another. The next step is to have students do guided or independent practice. And the students can do this either in small groups, they can work in pairs, or individually. Now, what kind of practice can they do? You could choose words for them to practice with and to apply, or you can have them choose. The words that are chosen could be out of their literature textbook if they're reading stories. They can be taken from a different subject area, such as math or science books. If you know that they are studying a certain topic, you can help them to pronounce the words more accurately so that they're integrating their language education with their content education in other subjects. Um, or you can just have them